Hello and welcome back to Pentiment, a medieval narrative adventure game. Previously on Pentiment, I reached the end of Act 1 and presented my evidence to the Archdeacon. I fingered Ferenc as the murderer, but I didn't have enough evidence because I didn't have time to dig up the disturbed grave that was indicated by his mysterious message. So, Widow Kemperin was executed for the Baron's murder. I bid farewell to Brother Piero, showed him my masterpiece, and left the Abbey. Seven years later, I returned to the Abbey. I had my apprentice Casper with me, and I chose England to add to Andreas' background. Let's see what's going to happen to Andreas and the village of Tassing in Act 2. We are staying in the Abbey's guest house. Uh, apparently that's not the same thing that happens to every player. It depends on how you play through Act 1. You can either start Act 2 at the guest house or you can start Act 2 by staying at an inn in town. It started me off here at the guest house. Let's go take a look around and see how things have changed in seven years. Oh, the meadow's full of flowers. What a stunning collection of wildflowers. They all grow so plentifully in the meadow. Nice. Oh, hello, kitty. I think we got to pet this kitty before. Seven years ago, the kitty is still around. <laughs> Can we not go down into the forest? I guess not. I don't have an option to do that. Oh, hey, it's Otto! Saying, just do it. You know it's the right thing. I don't understand why this is so hard for you. Is that Martin? He kind of looks like Martin. Otto, I'm scared. It's dangerous to cross the Abbot. Would you prefer the alternative? You don't need to do that, Otto. I understand. I'm just say... Andreas. Andreas Mailer? It's good to see you again, old friend. Otto, you're looking well. This is my apprentice, Casper Ziegler from Salzburg. We can pop out of the game and get some annotations here. Salzburg is a small city located on the river Salzach and founded on Roman ruins. Rumors of violence and rebellion in the city are becoming more common in Casper's hometown. I don't think there was a big house here in the meadow before though. Casper says good day and Otto says ah that answers that. I thought he might be your son. We don't grow them that fast even in Nuremberg. No, not yet. I've only been married seven years, Otto. <laughs> I'll just say we don't grow them that fast, even in Nuremberg. They grow fast enough around here. Eva and I just had our first, little Otto, though we call him Otz. Oh, so he married Eva after all. Eva was the daughter of the family we stayed with seven years ago. Congratulations to you both. That's wonderful news. After yourself? No, probably after his dad. His dad was also named Otto. I'll just say congratulations. Thank you. It's been a trial. Dad gone, but Clara and Ursula help out where they can. Oh, Clara and Ursula. Clara's the mom, and Ursula was the little toddler that we used to tell stories to when we were staying with them. I guess she's seven years older now, so maybe around nine or ten years old. Uh, I have a medical background, so I can say he lived a surprisingly long time considering his profession and previous stroke. I'm sorry to hear about your father. Huh, shame. You know what? I'm going to say I'm sorry to hear about your father. That's the nice thing to say. That's life. At least he's with the Lord now, free of his aches and pains. I know Eva wrote to you about my father's death, Andreas. Why didn't you write back? I'm... Sorry, things just got busy after I left Tassing. Sigh and look at the ground. I'll say I'm sorry. Sorry to interrupt, but I should be heading back. 
I feel like I should remember your face, but I can't place it. Otto, aren't you going to introduce me to your friend? I think it's Martin. Seriously, Martin with a beard. I'll say I feel like I should remember your face. Oh, don't trouble yourself. It's me, Martin, remember? Oh. <laughs> he didn't tell me to eat shit, so I didn't recognize him right away. That's what it was. Oh, yes, of course. Hello, Martin. You've grown. I'll just say hello. Hello. Sorry to run, but I have to get these sheep back to the farm. As much as I love whiling away the hours in the meadow, I have a lot to attend to. Otto, I'll see you at the meeting later. Andreas, until later. What meeting? Oh, I have a little thought bubble. I can say until then, or good to see you, Martin. My thought bubble says the last time I saw Martin was in this meadow. He was sneezing, seemed to hate being here. Even his mother cat said that he always sneezed when he was in the meadow. Strange. Is it strange, or are you just confused? No, I'm not confused. He definitely would sneeze in the meadow, and his mom said he had uh, hay fever or whatever. I know what I saw. Am I confused? I'll say I know what I saw. Are you sure? Why is it being all weird about it? I saw him in the meadow in the previous act because he was running away, I assume, from robbing the Baron. He had stolen a bunch of stuff from the Baron and he left town with it. And so I couldn't accuse him of being the murderer even though, you know, he might have murdered the Baron and then robbed him. But a lot of people in town and the Archdeacon all said, oh, we don't think Martin's the murderer. And I guess he came back to town. I'd love to find out what happened. I'm not going to say good to see you because it's not, but I'll just say until then. Pain in my ass, Otto says. Yeah, Martin used to be really irresponsible. He was very young and he got married young and he had a kid young and he didn't ever want to help doing chores and he was a thief. I guess he's straightened up a little bit. What's this about a meeting? Is something happening in town? I can't believe how much Martin's changed. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to ask all of these questions, but I'll, I'll talk about Martin. True, he's like the prodigal son. Took over his father's farm after France died. Oh, he died? Okay. He's been a much better husband to Brigitte and provider for Kat. That's his wife and his mother. What about his baby? He had a baby. What's this about a meeting? Oh, okay, so I can ask another question. Something happening. Uh, Franz died. How's little Wolf doing? Yeah, that's his baby. I'll ask about the baby. Since that's what I <laughs> that was my natural response, so I'll go with that. Francis' heart gave out. Local legend says he was screaming at Cat and he dropped dead. Well, it could be. Martin had to get it from somewhere. Not that I want anyone to suffer, but few were sad to see that man go. And little Wolf, he died a few months after you left. Oh. Oh, that's terrible. I remember... I think Brigitte is the daughter of the local midwife, and she's married to the stonemason. I don't think the stonemason was her dad, but maybe her stepdad, because there was a comment, if I recall correctly, about uh, him being like a father to her or something like that, treating her like his own or something. And he was looking forward to showing little Wolf how to be a stonemason. Aww. What's this about a meeting? Is something happening in town? I'll say what's this about a meeting, because that's what was mentioned. You've picked an interesting time to visit. Come by the town commons in a while. I think you'll be interested to hear what I have to say. Okay. Actually, I was just on my way to see Claus. All right, I'll think about it. I'll consider it, thanks. I'll say that. Hope to see you there. Until later. The mill is still in the distance. Can I go out there? I can. Let's go check out the mill. Ah, and the Roman ruins. Let's go see if they're different. Oh, there's still drawings out here. 
The miller's son liked drawing, but the miller thought it was a silly thing to do. He didn't want his son to become an artist. So the son would come out here to the ruins to draw pictures. And we're back at the church. It's Thomas, Andreas, I had heard you were back in testing. God bless you. God bless you, Father Thomas. It is good to see you again. Good morning, Father Thomas. You're not going to try to get me to come to Mass, are you? I'm not even going to bring that up. I'll just say God bless you. Hopefully this visit will be less eventful than your last. I doubt it, otherwise it wouldn't be part of the game. Tasting has enough going on as it is. We have our bonfire for St. John's Eve tomorrow night. People get up to all sorts of mischief. St. John's, the feast and celebration of St. John the Baptist, beginning at sunset on June 23rd, coincides with Midsummer's Day and the summer solstice. Oh, interesting. Okay. And then it's my job to hear their confessions in the days that follow. Yeah, it was mentioned, I think Sister Matilda mentioned that he was the confessor for all of the nuns and possibly the monks up at the monastery. Not to mention the grumbling the peasants are making. The grumbling? That's just talk, brother. No need to scare our guest with such things. I'm sure if there is trouble, Master Mailer will be the first to stick his nose in it. Yep, that's me, old nose sticking Mailer. Why are you always such an asshole? Say nothing. I'm gonna say it. You know what? Seven years have gone by and I'm not working for the Abbey anymore. Fuck this guy. <laughs> whose name is Guy. You have no appreciation for how privileged your life is. Yeah, I guess I don't, but you're still an asshole. It's easy enough for you to come and go. You don't have to live with the consequences. <laughs> but I do, though. We all do. It would have been better for everyone if you had simply allowed Brother Piero to die. What? Why would you say that? After all, he only had a few years left anyway. You're a buffoon and a coward who hides behind his habit. Stare menacingly at him. I was going to say you're a buffoon. Friends, friends, there's no need for such ire. I forgive me, Father Thomas. I let my passions get the better of me. Besides, that's not even why I came down here. I actually came to speak to you on the abbot's behalf, Andreas. Father Gounod would like to invite you to come to the library tomorrow morning if you're interested in purchasing some of our books. Father Gounod wants me to come to the library? Father Gounod and I were not on great terms. <laughs> Why didn't you tell me that when I was at the Abbey? I can't know the mind of the Father Abbot. I just do what he asks. The library is not quite ready yet as it does not see much use. If you could come by tomorrow morning, Mother Illuminata can show you what's available. Oh, she's a mother now and not the sister. She used to be Sister Illuminata and the mother was Mother Cecilia. I guess Mother Cecilia passed away. Mother Illuminata? Yes, since Mother Cecilia passed a few years ago. How did she die? I suppose Illuminata knows the library better than anyone. Yeah, she was... The keeper of the library when I was here seven years ago. I'll say, how did she die? Peacefully in her sleep. So, tomorrow morning, I'll come by to take a look. Very well, I'll let him know. And Andreas, I apologize for my harsh words before. It was rash. Brother Piero was a pious man and a skilled artist. We miss him. Oh, well, at least he's apologizing. I appreciate you saying that. I miss him, too. I'll say that. Excellent. I'm so glad you two were able to work things out. Oh, Father Thomas, do you have a moment to speak inside the church? Yes, I think so. Why? A private matter. <gasps> dun, dun, dun. Of course, of course. Until tomorrow. God bless you, Andreas. I don't know if I trust his sudden change of heart. The Abbot's Invitation. 
I ran into Brother Guy outside of the town church. He extended an invitation from the abbot to buy books from the library. Mother Illuminata will be waiting for me there in the morning. All right, the one thing about this game that I find very frustrating, I mean, in general, it's it's fun and it flows well and I like the art and everything is cool, but the one thing I find really frustrating is keeping track of time because they use the canonical hours, uh, uh, matins, lauds, prime, terse, and all of that, and also there's not really an easy way to tell what time it is in the game. I mean, I can pop out to this menu and it'll say, oh, it's terse, which is 9 a.m.-ish. But kind of keeping track, like, within the context of the game as you're having conversations and running around doing things, keeping track of how much time is passing and when you're supposed to eat a meal and all of that, it seems to be determined by certain conversations. Like, when you finish a certain conversation with someone you know, bing bong bing, then it's time to go eat lunch, and then you have a meal with someone, and then bing bong bing, it's time to go do something else. And it's just, I find it a little bit confusing, a little disorienting. Um, so, but I'll, I'll try to remember, like, the next time I wake up, I'm supposed to go see her. But, like, he was talking about having a meeting in town later, and I'm like, well, later when? Like, you know, at what point do I go into town and, and the meeting will be happening? I, I don't I don't know. I don't really understand it. Alright. Oh, it's called Our Lady of the Labyrinth now? I think it was called that before. So I remember seeing it on the map in Act 1. Yep, yeah, there it is. I wonder if old Smokey is still out in the forest. I liked old Smokey. All right, and they had uh, an anchoress living in this little room off of the church here, but I only ever heard from her once in the game so far. Yeah, we already went to the mill. Oh, Martin Bauer Farm, okay. The Drucker House, I think this is the printer's house? That's where we're trying to go to talk to Claus, but I want to go look around a little bit before I go in and talk to Claus. This is the stonemason's house here. It's closed off. North town. Oh, look at this. This is new. The Wrath House. Wrath House construction is going smoothly. I wonder if they'll finish it before winter. What's a rat house? A community hall where people meet. Typically a council that governs day-to-day -day affairs under the authority of a lord. Oh, it's like a town hall or something. Okay. That wasn't there before. This is the doctor's house. I guess he's still the doctor here because his name's still on it. Eisenkopf house. I don't think we could go into that house before. Tasting is still lucky to have Wound Wart. Yeah, that was there before. Okay. Here's the blacksmith shop. He is not there, and we can't go in his house. Okay. The Gertner Farm is where I stayed before. Alright, so I really can't do anything or talk to anyone. I've just got to go see Claus. So let's go do that. Hello? Oh, this is their bedroom. Sorry. <gasps> there he is. Who's this? Oh, she looks like she's very little, so she must be their new daughter. They didn't have her when I was here before. Claus is a printer. You can see his printing press there beside him. Andreas. I'm sorry, Claus. I know it's been a long time. Claus, you're not really mad, are you? I don't want to bother you, but I was passing through. Why would I say he's mad? I'll say I didn't want to bother you, but I'm passing through. Well, feel free to keep passing through. It's been seven years, after all. Okay, now he's mad. First Bert, then Marie, just after Magdalene was born. Oh, no. Oh, that's terrible. I'm so sorry, Claus. I wasn't expecting lengthy replies to my letters, Andreas, but an acknowledgement of their passing would have been nice. 
Yeah, Andreas, what the hell is wrong with you, man? Everybody was sending you letters and you just totally ignored them? I'm sorry, I should have written. I didn't know what to say. Say nothing. Apologize, you schmuck. Yes, you should have. Too late for that now, though. Oh. Boopy bobo. Uh, hello. She likes you. Your business seems to have grown. What are you printing? The Twelve Articles. They were originally written by Swabian peasants who were demanding changes from their lords. Ooh. Freedom from serfdom. Freedom to hunt and use the woods as God intended. Freedom from compulsory labor. Oh, that is some rebel talk, isn't it? Abolition of the inheritance tax, fair appraisal of rent, and return of property to common use and ownership. Bavaria isn't Swabia, but their complaints are just as valid for the peasants of Tassing. Ah, so this is Otto's cause. He's caught your ear already, hmm? The abbot has been squeezing the peasants for years. Now he's squeezing the townsfolk and we're pushing back. Yeah, that was a big issue that they talked about a lot in the previous act. Was uh, the, the previous abbot before Father Gernot wasn't so bad. And he would allow the peasants to pay their taxes in, in material or in labor. Like, you know, if they had extra crops or something like that, they could pay him that. But the, the new abbot, Father Gernot, was like, no, gold, pay your taxes, period. And if they didn't pay, they'd lose their land. Their cause is righteous, Andreas. If you haven't seen the Gertners lately, you should visit them. And Otto had you print these? Yes, why? Well, I didn't think he could read. He can't, but just about everyone else in town can. He speaks. I print. Just trying to do my part, I suppose. I'm sorry. I'm still not in the mood for this late reunion. Come back for dinner tomorrow. Man, I got all these appointments. I gotta write them down or I won't remember. Just like in real life. You should go to the commons. Hear what Otto has to say. It's worth hearing. I understand. Until later, Claus. Of course, I will see you then. Be good while we're gone, Magdalene. Uh, I'll, I'll say that. Will you be good? Cap, cap, cargo. Oh, it skipped right past the meal. It stopped raining. Maybe now I can go around and talk to people? Nope, everything is still closed off. Ah, here we go. We'll see what Otto has to say. Casper says, so many people. Otto says, everyone listen. We all know why we're here. Nothing I'm going to say will be a surprise. Nothing I'm going to say hasn't already been spoken behind closed doors, whispered to your neighbors. Nothing I'm going to say is untruthful, so it's time we started saying it openly. Year after year, the Abbey has found new ways to tax the peasants. Piece by piece, the Abbey has taken away our rights to use God's forest to support our families. Yeah, that was something from the previous uh, act as well, that they weren't allowed to chop down any wood. All they could do was gather fallen sticks for their fires. Law after law gets heaped upon us restrictions on how we can pay rent. Limits on where we can move, who we can wed. And now the death tax, which once claimed only our best animal and garment, takes half our estate. No consideration for widows. No consideration for children. What about the town council? The rat house. I don't know if I'm even saying that correctly. Maybe it's rath, rath house. But I'm going to say rat house because that sounds better for town council. <laughs> Surely that is a sign that the abbot wishes to share his power to listen to our grievances. You have a good heart, Ulrich. You always want to see the best in people. But no... 
The council is a way for the abbot to divide us, to pit a favored few against the many. This is not charity. No, only greed and desperation drive Father Gernot. You'd think that if the abbot could, he'd steal a dead man's soul from heaven itself. And when we protested, what did Father Gernot do? He locked the shrine of St. Moritz. He won't allow the people of this town, the farmers of this land, to pray before the relic. Now, when we most need the intercession of our saint, the abbot has shut us out. Father Gernot's actions aren't just. They aren't Christian. We've endured this abuse for too long. It's time we let the abbot know we won't take it anymore. We're not gonna take it. No, we ain't gonna take it. Stop, this is foolish, says Hannah. Who the hell is Hannah? Soldiers are already patrolling nearby towns. You push against the abbey, you'll incur the duke's wrath. The duke? You could get the town razed and everyone killed. Oh, Lenhart, he's the miller. He's kind of a dick. But I'm happy to see that his wife is still alive. He treats her really badly, or he used to. Hannah's right. The Duke is a powerful force in Bavaria. You're playing a dangerous game, Otto. You lot are no match for trained soldiers. If you don't relent, you'll be ground into dust like the Swabian peasants. We could always grind you up instead, Lenhart. They might be right if they are already soldiers about. I don't know about this. We must stand for what's right. Don't be shy. Speak up if you have cause. Martin says, we won't be overrun. The peasants of Salzburg were able to take the city and have their cause heard. If the people can get the Archbishop of Salzburg to listen to them, then we can do the same with the abbot. Master Andreas, do you think my family in Salzburg is all right? I don't know, Casper, but we can find out. Quiet, Casper, I'm trying to listen. I'll say I don't know, but we can find out. All right. Enough is enough. We can't stand by while the abbot continues treating us poorly. People all over Swabia are taking back their God-given rights. Why shouldn't we do the same? A righteous cause. Martin's right. We deserve better. We can do this. Well spoken, Martin. Everyone ought to consider what he said. Martin has proved dependable these last few years. But if the words of men can't persuade you, perhaps a sign from a greater power will. The abbot may have locked us out of our saint's shrine, but God has shown me that he is with us. Uh-oh. I don't know, Otto. I was with you all the way up until you had to invoke God is on your side. People who do the worst things will claim God is on their side. I think that's all I should say for now. Thank you all for coming. Oh, it's Clara. Good day, Andreas. Clara, it's been too long. It's lovely to see you. Hello, Clara. How are you? I'll say it's lovely to see you. And Eva, hello, Andreas. She's got a little baby on her back. I'm surprised to see you after your long absence from Tassing. At this rate, we thought we'd never see you again. What can I say? I miss the Alpine air and the people, of course. I was on the road back to Nuremberg, actually, and wondered how you all were getting on. I was gone too long. I'm sorry for not sending word of my arrival. Hmm. I'll say I was on the road back to Nuremberg and wondered how you were getting on. Oh, things are not good at all. We're in the middle of a strange season. Ah, you found the Gertners. Your speech was very rousing, Otto. I swear they get better each time. I can say, I hope the Duke doesn't catch word of this. The town could suffer. Or I can say, are you looking for trouble, Otto? I'll say, are you looking for trouble? Are you looking for trouble? Da 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 da. Of course not, but I understand what might happen if the abbot doesn't listen to reason. Even so, the people here can't go on like this. Something has to change. I'm just concerned for what might happen here. Say nothing. I'll say nothing. Otto, did you really see a sign from God? Is that true? Oh, I have a persuasion check. First one of Act 2. And I should be successful because I understood why many people hate the abbot. It is, Andreas, I swear. Come talk to me later. I'll tell you what I can, all right? 
Anyways, Andreas, you and yours should come by the house for supper. We'd be delighted to have you. That sounds wonderful. We'll be there. Sound good to you, Casper? Uh, I'll just say it sounds wonderful. So now I got dinner with them as well. Go to the Gertners for supper. Let's see if old Smokey is out in the forest. Oh, now I can go into the Zimmerman house. Okay. Can I go to the forest? Oh, hey, it's Cat. How you doing, Cat? Andreas, Andreas Mailer? Hello, Cat. Well, would you look at that? You are back in tassing. She's got some gray in her red hair. And look at you, you've done well for yourself. And who's this? Cat, please meet Casper, my apprentice. Hello. He's got the posture of an artist, that's for sure. Good, strong face, though. I do? What brings you back to Tasting, Andreas? Just passing through on the way back to Nuremberg. How have you been, Cat? You seem well. Or I could say I saw Martin earlier. I must say I was surprised to see him. Yeah, let's, let's ask about Martin. That's right, he disappeared when you were last in town. Franz passed a few winters ago, then Wolf. Brigitte and I nearly lost the farm and our mines. But Martin returned shortly after, and he's proved to be a changed man, a good man. He saved us from destitution. I've been wondering where Wolf was. I'm so sorry, Cat, or my condolences on Franz passing. Can I say both? Well, I'll say I'm sorry about losing the little one because that's that's I mean any loss is devastating but it's especially devastating to lose a child or grandchild I don't know what else to say I'm sorry there's nothing to say is there he was a good boy a sweet good little boy the stars dimmed when he passed yes oh my gosh but that was years ago now. I try not to dwell on it, to be strong for Regita and to find solace in the knowledge he is with God now. Times may be hard and tasting right now, but God truly does answer our prayers. I'm glad you and your family are well, Cat, despite everything. Thank you, Andreas. It truly is good to see you again, even in the midst of such terrible times. Until later, Cat. Until then. Aw, she's very sweet. Oh, there's Martin. Hey, Martin. Andreas Mailer, good to see you again after all these years. Well, you're not going to tell me to eat shit? I'm surprised you'd say that. Your parting words to me back then were hardly kind. And you as well. Yes, I'm going to say that. Were they? It's been so long, I don't remember. You told me to eat shit. It was pretty rude. I'm going to tell him. You told me to eat shit. Oh, God, that's bad. I was such a little shit. <laughs> well, sorry for being such an asshole back then. It seems like you've learned a lot since then. Nothing to feel bad about. It was a long time ago. It seems like you've learned a lot. I'll say that. Seven years is a long time for a young man, especially one going through what I was. What happened to you, anyway? Oh, right. You know, I stole some of the Baron's things. I didn't make it far with them. I tried to sell them in Walgau, and I got robbed. Serves me right, I guess. Oh, so he robbed the Baron, and then he got robbed. Luckily, they didn't find the coins I was carrying. The money carried me around Bavaria for another month and a half. Then I started stealing. I grew bigger and more confident over time and became a highwayman. You were a bandit? You're lucky you didn't get killed. I'll say you were a bandit? Hard to believe, I know, but yes. Anyway, it didn't last long. I eventually got scared out of it. I had a partner for the last year of my adventures. We tried to rob some Italians. We thought they were merchants traveling under the banner of St. George. St. George is a 2nd century Praetorian guard and patron saint of England. He is most well known for his legendary victory against a dragon. They were not. They were soldiers guarding the property of an Italian bank. My partner didn't survive the encounter. I was wounded and alone in the wilderness. I thought of my father, my mother, Brigitte. I realized I couldn't remember a wolf's face anymore. I had to come back and take up the responsibilities I had left behind. 
Well, it's good that you did, for everyone's sake. Was coming back difficult? Yeah, it's good that you did, for everyone's sake, but... Yeah, was it difficult to come back? It was. I felt like I had stepped out of another life into this one. It took me a while to get used to everything, to remember how things used to be. Eh, it's all in the past now. Just need to look forward. Wow, that was quite a speech you gave back at the commons. That's a good attitude. I'll talk to you later. I'll say it was quite a good speech. He needs support. The townsfolk aren't as committed to opposing the abbot. They have less to gain and more to lose if the abbot chooses to get the duke involved. Anyway, I have to get back to work. Good talking to you, Andreas. Alright, until later. Wow, Martin's changed a lot. Hey, Brigitta! I still don't know if it's Brigitta or Brigitta, but I'll, I'll probably just keep saying it different ways all through the whole game. Hello, Andreas. Hello, Brigitta. How are you? I'm surprised you knew I was back. Now I'm, st I'm standing right there talking to her mom, or mom-in-law, so I'll say, how are you? As well as anyone can be in casting right now. It looks like things are going well for you. Martin returned. No wonder with Martin back in town. I'll just say it looks like things are going well with Martin. This will be remembered. Yes, the winter without him was excruciating. Why will it be remembered? Why does that matter? I lost Little Wolf and Cat was worried that she'd lose the farm after Franz died. Yeah, that's what I heard. But then Martin returned and he's provided well for us ever since. Despite the tightening restrictions, we've gotten by and I'm thankful. That's wonderful to hear. I'm happy for you. That's nice. I'm sorry to hear about Wolf. Yeah, I'll say that. Thank you. It's... I try not to think about it. You don't want to remember him? Nod regretfully. Well, I'll say you don't want to remember him. I do. Of course I do. Do you really? I spoke well of Martin's return, and so I can persuade her to answer me. Oh, that's... Okay. No. Oh, I don't know. How do you mean? Wait for her to collect her thoughts. I'll wait for her to collect her thoughts. Dark thoughts come for me when I am alone, Andreas. Unchristian thoughts. Did I do all I could for him? I cherished him. I tried to protect him. But it wasn't enough. Maybe God took him from me because I wasn't enough. And maybe it's good Wolf died, if Mary in heaven would be a better mother for him than I could ever be. Aw, Brigitte, don't feel like that. Even Mary could not save her son, Brigitte. Yeah, I'll say that. But isn't it she who women are called by the Lord to emulate? I suppose. I don't know what to say. Cat wants to talk about him all the time, you know. Any night there's clear sky. She looks up and asks if I ever wonder how he is up there. Do you think about what it's like for him in heaven? I dream I meet him there sometimes. It's not over for Cat. She wants to keep him alive by remembering him. But I need it to be over. When you dwell on his death, it begins to feel like something terrible might happen to you. I'm sorry I brought him up, Brigitte. Yeah, I'll just say that. Because I'm not going to assume that she's having any kind of other thought. I mean, I'm just, I'm just going to say I'm sorry. You didn't know. It's all right. I'm glad you care. That she cares. That people care about him being gone. It takes the weight off me having to carry it all. Does Martin talk about him? But you still have to carry it. Yeah, I'll say you still have to carry it. I do. Sigh. It's been good to see you again, Andreas, but I should go. Of course, be well, Brigitte. I've kept you too long until later. I'll say, of course, be well. Oh, that's very sad. Alright, can we see what's down here now? No, nope, nothing down here. Maybe they just use it as a shed for the farm here. The farm seems to have expanded. 
Alright, I wanted to try to get to the forest. Oh, there's Hetty. Hello, Andreas. Oh. Hans is still in the same exact spot. He's a lot older, but he hasn't moved. Hans! Hey, Andreas. Heard rumor you were back. Hello. Meet Casper, my apprentice. Hello. Hello. Are you from Nuremberg like Andreas? I'm from Salzburg. Is that very far from here? Uh, not too far, I think. A few days to the east on horseback. I've never been outside of Tassing. Or ridden a horse. Ah, oh, man. I can't say... T I don't want to say Tassing is a wonderful place to live. Because it sounds like it ain't. Do you know another alpine town with two saints? Seems fine to me, all things considered. That's because you've never been anyplace else. Though truly, everywhere is a shithole. <laughs> right. Right. I mean, things are, you know, are what they are all over. Even Nuremberg? Especially Nuremberg. I didn't mind Salzburg. I'm glad I live in Tassing, then. At least it's my shithole. Until later, Hans. Until then. Okay. Johan. Andreas Mailer didn't expect to ever see you back in Tassing. You look like you've done well for yourself. That's what everybody keeps saying. Thanks. And how have you been? It may look like it, but it doesn't feel like it. Yeah, I'll say that. It looks like you're getting plenty to eat, which is more than some of the families around here can say. I'm sorry to hear that. How have you been? Things went well for a while after you left. Widow Kemperin went under the sword, and the abbot let us work old Renning's land. She didn't go under the sword, though. I thought she was strangled. But alright, maybe that's just a turn of phrase. My brother's heart gave out not long after, but then Martin came back to help work the land. Even so, it's been hard to keep up with the abbot's demands, the taxes, and everything else. Sounds like a lot of people are upset with the abbot these days. Hmm, well, I'm really just passing through. No, I'll continue talking about it. Sounds like people are upset. They have good reason to be. I know you got on well with the man. <laughs> Actually, I didn't, though. <laughs> but things have gotten much worse since your last visit. Father Matthias never let things get this bad. Anyway, good to see you, Andreas, even if you are just passing through. Till later. Alright, I want to go to the forest. How do I get to the forest? I want to see if old Smokey is out there. Oh, here we go. Forest. Alright, let's go see. Smokey's still there. Yeah, he is! He's got a hat now. Hey, Smokey! Oh, hello, Master Mailer. You're looking well. Thank you, Smokey. How are you? Ah, uh, well enough, I guess. Vaxlov went his way a few years ago, which I suppose was bound to happen. I miss the company sometimes, but now there's no one to keep me from my gossip. No one to tell it to, either. Have I missed much? Maybe you should take it to confession. Uh, I'll say, have I missed much? Heh, the things I could tell you since you left Tassing. We'd be here till kingdom come. Oh? Remain silent. Now I'll say, oh? I did see another Imperial Reichspost courier ride from the Abbey a few days ago. Imperial Reichspost. A private mail service run by the Thern and Taxus family and approved by the Holy Roman Empire. Okay. Further guy dropped the bag once. It looked heavy. The Abbey must be doing better than the Abbot is letting on. Does that happen often? I'd heard the Abbey was struggling with its funds. Yeah, I'll say that. Curious, isn't it? The couriers arrive once or twice a month. Doesn't help that the Abbot has tightened restrictions so close to St. John's Eve, too. So is the Abbey saying it's doing badly in order to get more money out of the peasants? Or is it really doing badly? 
The townsfolk get up to all sorts of mischief then. Yeah, that's what I've heard. Oh no, I'm sure Father Grinnell won't like that. Oh, I'm not going to say that. What sort of mischief? I'd wager Johan and Kat will find some corner to play in again. Uh, what? I mean, Kat's husband is dead, so she's a widow, but I thought Johan was married to Hetty. It's practically tradition at this point. Veronica and Brigitte might go out for a midnight dip by the waterfall, too. Oh, you know what? I bet all of this information is going to be helpful. I wonder if I'm going to be able to go out in the middle of the night and find all these things happening. They've been swimming out there for years. Now everyone's getting clever, trying to stay out from the abbot's eye. Rightly so. He's an ass. <laughs> I didn't see you in the town commons during Otto's speech. Aren't you standing with the peasants? Well, their cause doesn't really affect me, does it? I'm as worried as anyone about soldiers rushing through here, but the new taxes and restrictions don't bother me. I understand why they're upset, but I've been doing fine out here with less than they have. Nothing will change for me if they get their way. Yeah, I actually did some reading online about charcoal burners in the Middle Ages. It was a profession, like Miller or Baker, because it was something that, you know, towns needed. I also read that it was considered a very low-class profession, like even lower than the peasants. I don't know if it's because they were off in the forest by themselves, or because they got so dirty from all the soot or whatever. But Smokey seems pretty cool. I like him. You could still support them, I see. Remain silent. I'll just remain silent. Ah oh, well, enough of that. Thanks for stopping by, Master Mailer. Until later, Smokey. Thanks for all the hot goss. Oh, and Backslav is not there anymore. Alright. Back to the forest. And what's this? With Father Grinnell's new restrictions, the townsfolk can't even gather sticks without a fee. Oh my gosh, they used to be able to gather sticks for free. They just couldn't take the wood. That's terrible. Let's go to the waterfall. That old fallen tree is still there. The waterfall must flow down from the snow melt. Yeah, that's the same as before. Old salt mine. What's going on at the old salt mine? This is where the little kids in town used to hang out and play. Oh, there's something here. What's this? Two innocents. What? That wasn't there before. Two innocents were referred to in the first act. Somebody who had really nice calligraphy, nicer than the people in the scriptorium at the abbey, somebody was sending out these letters and one of them lured the Baron to the chapter house where he was murdered. And the others seemed to be luring people in town to the chapter house at the same time. Like someone was trying to get everyone who had a beef with the Baron to converge on the Baron and get somebody to murder him. And one of the letters mentioned the two innocents. But I never found out who they were. I suspect they're somehow related to the stonemason, Lucky, because I went and had lunch with him and his wife, and he prayed for the two innocents. But I didn't get a chance to ask him anything. Like, the game didn't give me any conversation options to say, hey, Lucky, who are the two innocents? And nobody else in town told me anything about it either. But I guess they're buried here? Huh. Maybe if I had followed the line of inquiry, because there was a point in the game where I could have followed Lucky, like tailed him somewhere. Maybe that would have revealed the grave to me, and then I would find out who the innocents were. That's kind of a bummer that I don't get to find out. Alrighty. What is this? Golden Hand Inn. Oh, okay. I think this is the inn where we would stay if we weren't allowed to stay in the guest house at the Abbey. I mean, I guess that Father Grenot doesn't hate me too much because he let me stay in the guest house, but that's fine. I don't like him. Who's this? Killian. Good day, Master Mailer. 
How do you know me? Who the heck's Killian? Can I go up the stairs? Who's this? Nico. Hello and welcome to the Golden Hand. Oh, I, I bet it's named after the relic that they have up in the shrine. I am Nico Berger. Berger? I own this land house and run it with my wife Hannah and our son Killian. A land house is an inn or tavern owned and operated by a single family that serves travelers in rural areas. Okay. I believe you are Master Mailer, yes? Andreas Mailer, the famous artist from Nuremberg? Oh, I'm famous. Yes? Someone has exaggerated my fame. How do you know who I am? Yeah, I'll say how do you know. The people in Tassing hold you in high regard. When you arrived in town, one of the locals said you lived here a few years back. Yes, I worked for the Abbey as an artist. I see. I heard that you were involved in solving a murder. Out of necessity, the wrong man was being accused of the crime, a friend of mine. Are you trying to ask me to solve a murder? Say nothing. I'll just say out of necessity. I heard an old widow did it, that she was a witch. All right. She was a widow, and she was not a witch. Where did you hear that? I don't want to talk about it. No, I'll ask. Uh, where did you hear she was a witch? Oh, bits and pieces that people have said here and there. Well, it's wrong. It sounds like the story has changed in the last seven years. Uh, yeah, I'll say that. I meant no offense, Master Mailer. I just find it to be an interesting story. It's not a story. It's something that happened. Two people died. I have to go. I'll say it's not a story. It's something that happened. Of course, of course. Again, I meant no offense. Well, I'll leave you to your day. Until later. Alright. Oh, who's this? Hey, he looks fancy. Samuel. Hello, Andreas. How do you know my name? I guess everyone in town's talking about me. Who's Samuel? Why can't I talk to him any further? Why can't I say, hey, who are you? What's going on here, dude? interesting. I want to talk to him. He looks like the kind of NPC that you'd be able to hire as a follower. <laughs> if this was Skyrim. Hello, Hannah. Hello, Master Mailer. Oh, she's got nothing else to say. She was the one that spoke up at the meeting. I probably would be in one of these rooms if I wasn't staying at the Abbey. Alright. Well, I think that's all for me today. I've been playing for about an hour, and so I will wrap it up. But it has been very interesting coming back to the village of Tassing and seeing how everything has changed. And seeing what people have to say about what happened seven years ago. I am looking forward to finding out more about the town and about what's been going on. It sounds like there's going to be a revolution. They say you want a revolution. And so we'll see if that's going to happen soon or if there's going to be another murder mystery or, or what we're going to get caught up in. But I'm looking forward to it. And I hope you are too. If you're enjoying these videos, don't forget to leave a like, subscribe, tell your friends, leave a comment. Let YouTube know so that it will suggest more of these videos to you and help other people find my channel. I appreciate it so much. And if you want to go even further in supporting me, check out the links in the description. See what I get up to when I'm not playing video games. I've got a website called junkwitch.com where I sell things that would get me burned at the stake by the Inquisition if I lived in the 16th century. <laughs> Take care of yourselves. Until next time.